Hey everybody, John here, and welcome to my series, How to Use Citrus. This is going to be video 10, and we're going to be talking about the arpeggiator within Citrus. So go ahead and open up Citrus and load up a default patch. Now, I kind of set up a couple extra things here to demonstrate how this arpeggiator works. So what I have previously set up is I went here within the piano roll, and I put down C sharp, so I put one, two, three, four, and five notes for C sharp. Now I made this a bar long and I just put this within the playlist window here and I put one here in the back so we don't loop it right now. So without further ado, let's open up our first operator. Let's go to volume and envelope. So we think of an arpeggiator is going to be changing the different notes that we hold as a chord on our keyboard. So we can do this sim simply by clicking this gear icon and the wrench and then selecting like a down, for example, and let's play a chord. So let's put this to one octave. So it'll just repeat these notes going down and it goes up here. Here's up and down. Here's a sticky up and down. And then here's kind of a, looks like a random. So now this is cool for a quick type of arpeggiator. And this is available within uh, FL Studio for really any plugin. So you could do that within Serum or any external plugin, which is really cool. But within Citrus, we have a little bit more control over our arpeggiator. So go to volume on the operator one tab and then go to the envelope. It might, you might think at first that we're going to go to the pitch tab, but we're actually going to be in the volume, and you'll see why in a second. So the quickest, kind of easiest, I say I would guess best way to do this is by using sequences. So if we click on this drop-down menu here, let's create a sequence. Now, yours might have a default set up a little bit differently. I'm not sure what yours is going to load up as default because I was playing around with this earlier. So here on this sequence window, I have these four here selected. So if you right click, you can change the types of these, or you can hit alt click and just re alt right click and just remove them if you have more than four here. So within this window, if you've never seen this before, we can edit how these uh, how this envelope looks and the shape of it. So if we're here in our attack level, we can slide these different bars here and then change the attack on different types of. Uh, of our envelope spots and you can see by this white line here which corresponds to these uh, these uh, peaks here this this attack right there so let's put this all back at the top and we can also do the same with the decay as we can change here we can see those little curves moving and then we can do sustain and then we can also do release and if you don't know how I'm resetting this I'm holding alt and then just left click dragging and it goes back to the center there and then we can reset it if we have any changes we don't want and we, we want to go back to regular. We can randomize it. And that humanize is also kind of cool. So let's select our attack. And let's hit humanize a few times and just kind of, it'll just kind of randomize it and make sure that everything's not exactly to the grid. So let's alt drag all that over. So that's kind of the basis of these controls. This knob here is kind of a global offset for the decay, the attack, the sustain. And this is kind of a gate. You can see at the bottom how it kind of makes it a little bit sharper there. So let's all click and put these all back. Swing is kind of just, obviously, the swing. It just kind of changes the groove, the feel of it. And then the time multiplication or multiplicator. Okay, and then we got the ping pong, normal, depending on what you want to use. Because uh, normal is just doing the four. The ping pong is going to be doubling that right there. So make sure you select on ping pong, ping pong for this example if you would like to follow along. So let's hit accept because this is what we want. And in this window, it's going to be highlighted green. And that means that there's going to be a loop in that signified by this little L down here. So if we right click this uh, node here, that we can see that this loop start is checked. And then for the end of the loop, we can right click here and we can see that's sustain slash loop end. So as we hold down the key, keyboard it is just gonna be an endless loop of this green section here now I have this piano roll here set up with these five notes of C sharp and I slowed down the tempo drastically to 60 BPM so it's not as overkill fast for us so we can follow along so 
on the bottom here, we see these little arrows. Now those signify which note that is going to go to next. So if we right click this, we have options of next, same, previous, and none. So going up is going to hit the next note in the sequence. So as we hit play, oh, I think we left our, uh, did we leave this on by mistake? We did, we left this random arpeggiator on. So if it sounded funny, make sure to turn that off. So back here into our piano roll. So we can see that while we follow this envelope curve, it's just gonna be continuously going to the next note of what is being held down at the moment. So our root note is this, but it starts as this. It should start like this, you would think. And the reason for that is because this first, uh, this first attack here is telling it to go to the next note immediately. So if we right click this and hit same, and now we play it. So then it's just gonna cycle through this chord here that we have. Well, it's technically not a chord, it's all just C sharps, but hopefully you get the point of that. So let's demonstrate that again. And then it stops, because that's all we have in, inside here. So if we wanna change some, some things, so this is same, this is next, 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 and next, and next again. So we can, let's say right click this, let's say you go to previous on every other one here. And then let's see what happens here. So now it's just basically ping-ponging between the next and the previous and the next and the previous and the next and the previous. So hopefully you understand how this system works. It can be confusing at first because you're kind of trying to wrap your head around like which note's going to go to the next one. And if this goes previous, does that go to the next one? It's confusing at first, but I promise you spend some time with it and kind of just make some something simplistic, slow down, slow down the tempo so you can see what's happening. And then after a little bit, you're going to be like, oh, okay, this, this starts to make sense. And then speed up your tempo when dial in your arpeggio, how you want it to sound. So this way is really cool because you can customize it in a lot of different ways at a lot of different uh, peaks here as well. You can make this go on for as long as you'd like and then change the notes accordingly. So this way is cool doing this. Uh, let's turn this off for now. So we just have our, our regular sign. This way over here is really cool because it's a quick way and it works with every other plugin that you can load up in FL. And you can change the range here, four octaves three octaves, two octaves. And then you can also have this chord section and kind of you have a whole list of things to play around with. So that's kind of the quick arpeggiator and this is the arpeggiator exactly within Citrus itself. So hopefully this makes sense to you guys. If there's anything of this video that you have uh, questions about or something that's ma not making sense or you don't understand, please let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to help you out. This is going to conclude this series of Citrus, uh, how to use Citrus. So thank you very much for watching. If you made it all the way through all the parts to 10, that's really awesome. Thank you very much. And I hope you learned something through this lengthy, lengthy process, especially our last video. That one kind of went a little bit longer than expected. I might make some more videos of little tips and kind of tricks and things to kind of look out for in Centris and just kind of help you use it a little bit better and quicker and maybe a little bit more broad overall things about the uh, the synth itself and maybe also some more sound design uh, sounds with Citrus as well. So thank you for watching and if there's anything else you'd like to know, let me know. Have a good day.